What's in your blood? That's what we're gonna be talking about in this video. So let's do it. So now that I'm over 40, I've been trying to be really good about going to the doctor regularly just to make sure everything's functioning properly. Trying to live as long as I can, be as healthy as I can, if you know what I'm saying. One of the tests my doctor orders is called a complete blood count or CBC. This is basically a test that measures the different components in your blood and some other features to give you an idea of how well you're doing, generally speaking, in terms of health. I'm gonna help you understand some of those numbers today, as well as a few additional details about what's actually inside your blood. So, once they draw your blood, that blood goes into a test tube. They then take that test tube and put it into a centrifuge, which will then spin it around at a very high speed to separate the components of the blood. Now, the heaviest stuff is gonna go down to the bottom, the lighter stuff is gonna to be to the top of that test tube. The heaviest stuff in the blood will actually be red blood cells, AKA the erythrocytes. These are the cells that are responsible for transporting oxygen throughout the body. And when we talk about the hematocrit, we are looking at the percentage of red blood cells in the blood. So after you run it through the centrifuge, you will see a layer of red blood cells at the bottom. If that layer is, let's say, 45% of the entire solution, then the hematocrit would be 45%. As you can see, the average is around 38 to 48%. The next layer you will see after the red blood cells would be a thinner layer that we call the buffy coat. In that thin, clear layer, we have the white blood cells and platelets. The white blood cells, these are also called leukocytes. And these are the cells that play a huge role in protecting the body from foreign invaders. Platelets, on the other hand, also known as thrombocytes, these are cell fragments that are involved in blood clotting. Let's say you get a cut. When that happens, you start bleeding. Now, if it's not a really major cut, after a short while, you'll notice that the bleeding is gonna stop. I mean, hopefully, unless it's like a huge cut that will need extra help with things like stitches or something like that. Part of the reason for this is that the platelets are doing their job. All right. What else do we have? Uh, yes, above the buffy coat, that's where you're gonna find the rest of the stuff, the plasma, which is made up of, well, mostly water. Approximately 92% of it is water. And in that water, you have mostly proteins, but also things like nutrients, hormones, and like hundreds of other dissolved substances. Now, if I were to go into all the hundreds of dissolved substances, this would be a ridiculously long video. So instead, I'll stick with telling you about the top three proteins that are found in the plasma. But before we do that, let me give you a short quiz. Type your answers to the following two questions in the comments area below before moving on. Like literally hit pause, give your answer, and then continue. At the end, I'll tell you which answers are correct and you'll see how well you did. Question number one, the following component makes up the majority of the blood. Is it A, red blood cells, B, white blood cells, C, platelets, or D, plasma? Hit pause, write down your answer, and then let's move on to question number two. In which layer can you find the blood component responsible for blood clotting? Is it layer one, layer two, layer three, or layers one and two? Type your answer below and let's move on. Okay, now let's talk about the top three proteins that are found in the plasma. The first one is albumin. This is the one that we find in the highest concentrations in the blood plasma. In fact, it makes up about 55% of the protein content in the blood. Albumin has two very important functions. The first is that it helps to maintain the right fluid balance in the body. Without albumin basically holding onto the fluids in the blood vessels, more fluid would leave the blood vessels and accumulate in the tissues causing serious damage. And secondly, it acts as a kind of transport vehicle for things like fatty acids and specific types of hormones. That's very important. Now, the second most common proteins found in the blood plasma are globulins. These make up about 38% of the plasma proteins and have various functions. Some of them are things like transport proteins that help to transport things like iron, lipids, fat soluble vitamins. Others are the immunoglobulins, also known as antibodies that help to fight off foreign intruders in the body. 
Globulins are important for many reasons. And lastly, there's fibrinogen, which accounts for about 7% of the plasma proteins. Fibrinogen is a protein that's involved in the blood clotting process. If your fibrinogen levels are low, that can result in excessive bleeding and blood loss when you get a cut. That can be very problematic because, well, we've seen how important blood is. It's like liquid gold and you want to hold on to that stuff. Now, depending on the type of blood test you get, you'll see a whole bunch of other levels that we won't cover in this video. Things like specific hormone levels, enzyme levels, cholesterol levels, or others. I can create many videos related to each of those things and many others. And that's because of how important blood is to our survival. If you have specific things you want me to cover about something in the blood, drop a comment below and let me know. Know. However, we've covered the major things, and as we continue on in this series, I'll continue adding more details. Now, let's see how well you did on my little quiz. Here are the correct answers. The component that makes up the majority of the blood would be the red blood cells. And for question number two, layers one and two are where you would find the components that are responsible for blood clotting. In layer one, we find fibrinogen, and in layer two, we find the platelets. I know, I was a bit tricky on that. <laughs> but did you get it right? Let me know in the comments below. Now, in the next video, we'll talk about the process of hemopoiesis. That's how the blood is made. And I'll see you over there. Peace.